Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Would you agree that polarization is a major affliction in our country and in our world today? So would you like to know about a process that I've used with individuals, teams, and organizations that is guaranteed to reduce polarization, to eliminate trade-offs, and to increase partnership with people? Yes. Wonderful. So let me tell you about a little story of two clients that I'm working with now, Jill and Jack. So I'm coaching Jill and Jack individually as well as part of a team. They're doing an action learning project in a large global consulting firm. And they're both managing directors. They were assigned to work together. They did not choose the team. It was a team of uh, more than themselves. And it was a very high visibility project that they have chosen to uh, work on in their organization. So things have been going very, very well. It's a five-month project. They've been getting together regularly, and they seemed like happy campers until about midway through. So all of a sudden, when I was talking to Jill, she started to tell me that um, she was the only one that was um, organizing meetings and had to initiate things. She was the only one that was uh, holding people accountable for what they said they were going to do. Jack, on the other hand, was not communicating, and he was doing his own thing no matter what they had agreed to do. Jack called immediately afterward and said, you know, I'm holding up this project all by myself. So, you know, I'm the one that's focusing on deliverables and timetables. And, you know, I'm the one that is really about action. Whereas Jill is Miss Bossy Pants. You know, she's always telling me we have to have more meetings, we have to talk about things, and it's, it's just driving me crazy. So, we were talking about Jill's upside and Jack's downside, the things that were driving her crazy. Therefore, he was wrong, right? And he was a difficult person to work with. Jack was all about just do it, the Nike way, and Jill was analysis paralysis. Clearly, she is wrong and difficult to work with. So partnership was destroyed at this point. While I was listening to their stories, and they were different stories, I was hearing some underlying positive values being discussed. And what I was hearing had nothing to do with their personalities. What I was hearing was there was a focus on process, and there was a focus on production. And I asked them if they would mind if uh, we got together and I reframed the issue for them. So that's what I did. And I started writing things down with them. So we started talking about the upside of a process focus, which is you need to have role clarification. You need to have clear times of communicating that people agree to. And there's also an upside of being product focused, isn't there? You've got to get things done, and you've got to get things done on time. Well, that went fairly easily. Both could acknowledge this. And then we started talking about what is the downside of each one of these values. So first we spoke about the downside of over-focusing on process to the neglect of product. Now, guess who jumped to the fore there? Jack was like, boom, 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 boom. Here are all the things wrong with focusing, uh, over-focusing on process, right? And when we got to over-focusing on production to the neglect of process, Jill was a genius. 
she had all of the bullet points ready to fire off. And each one of them had to admit to some of those risks involved when you overfocus on one to the neglect of the other. So what I emphasize with them was that it was an and proposition, that you need both of those things to have a successful project, and that each one of them, their biggest fear is the downside of the other's value. And so when you have a fear, what do you do? You avoid it. And you focus on it, and the more you focus on it, the more it happens, right? And so you want to run away from it, and so you contend to overfocus on your value, which eventually gets you to the downside of that value. And that's what was happening with them. So we ended up doing a map. And we have the top of the map is the greater purpose. That's what they want. They want excellent output. They both want that. What they don't want is poor output. And so what are they going to do now? Well, we needed to come up with action steps that would keep them in the upside of both process and product focus. And so I asked them to brainstorm some things that would keep them in the positive aspects, first on process, then on product. And they could do that quite well. And then I said, but inevitably, you're going to end up coming into the downside of one or the other, because that's what happens in life. And they had to come up with early warning signs that would let them know that they were over-focusing on one value to the neglect of the other. And so we started brainstorming, what are those early, early warning signs that start to tell us that we're getting into that downside? part of the equation. And we did that successfully. And what they realized was that they had a common ally, which was each other committed to being in the, in the upside of both of those values. And they now had a common enemy, which was not each other. It was getting into the downside of overfocus on one to the other. And they needed each other to check and make sure that they were moving forward effectively. So what that was was a polarity map. And we used polarity thinking to get there. And Barry Johnson, who wrote the book Polarity Management many years ago, defines polarities as a natural energy system. Whether we see them or not, they're there. And it's where two apparent opposites are both highly desirable. And in fact, they're dependent on each other over time. They are unsolvable dilemmas. They are not problems to be solved. They're unsolvable, they're unstoppable, and we can use them to harness positive energy. So whenever we are in a situation where there's a someone versus someone else, where there are sacrifices that people are talking about having to be made, where we're talking about going from this to this, where we're talking about a gap analysis, where there are camps involved. I know that it's time to look at polarities that are at play underneath, the two positive values that people are just not seeing. And go to both and thinking instead of the either or thinking. Nature has a lot to teach us about polarities. Nature knows that we need roots and we need wings. Nature knows that we need egalitarianism and we need hierarchy. Nature knows that we need rigidity and we need flexibility. So I'd like to leave you with two quotes, one by our dear Carlin Sloan from the book on fear. One of the greatest paradoxes of leadership is the fact that we need to push forward and believe things are possible, and we need to accept the current reality. It's not an either or proposition. And Peter Kestenbaum, who is a philosopher of business, 
says, I believe that this, the central leadership attribute is the ability to manage polarity. So I hope that you will take polarity thinking, which I know you're all using, and it's all part of our lexicon and our intuition anyway, and to help leaders see the possibility of thinking this way, and to stay in partnership, and to unleash the incredible potential that comes from moving from what Jim Collins and Porras called the tyranny of the oar to the genius of the ant. Thank you.